Welcome to Garden Sanity. I'm Laura, and today's video is all about perennials rabbits hate. Specifically, 19 different flowering perennials. First, I'm going to show you 10 different flowering perennials that are working for me so far in my own gardens. And then I'm going to give you nine additional suggestions, some of which I plan on purchasing this year. So let's get started. So there's two things that rabbits don't like. They don't like strong fragrances or smells, and they don't like fuzzy leaves or fuzzy stems. However, this isn't a hard and fast rule because we have to remember that rabbits, they can't read. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, but it's true. They can't read and they don't always know they're not supposed to eat these plants. And that would explain why my black-eyed Susans were devoured by rabbits, as well as salvia, marigolds. I've even had some poisonous plants, poisonous to rabbits, such as yucca and lantana that rabbits have devoured in my gardens. All of these have appeared on lists that you can find on the internet that say they're rabbit resistant. So I'm not including those on the list today because my experience is rabbits have devoured those. So I've been dealing with rabbits for many years. I've seen them in action. I've seen what works, what doesn't work. So the following are 10 perennials that are tried and true in my garden. Rabbits have left them alone completely, haven't touched them, and they're all wonderful, gorgeous bloomers. So you can have flowers in your garden, even if you have rabbits. Now, each of these 10 that I'm gonna show you are common plants, meaning that you can find them at your local garden nursery, and you can also find them even in most cases at the big box garden centers. So it shouldn't be too hard finding them. And of course, you can also use your favorite plant catalogs, websites, etc. So here we go. So the first plant is ornamental onions, also called alliums. Now I'm specifically not talking about the bulb versions such as Purple Sensation or Globemaster, even the little drumstick alliums. You can purchase those as bulbs, usually plant those in the fall and they'll come up in the spring or early summer. What I'm talking about today specifically are the perennial ornamental onions that you would buy, and yes, the bulbs are perennials, but these would be plants you buy at the garden center. So you can find alliums in so many different colors from dark purple to lilac to almost like a bluish purple. There's even pink and white. So you can do some research and really come up with some neat ornamental onions that'll go really pretty with whatever garden scheme you have. For me, I planted millennium alliums and I planted them to try them out and they looked beautiful. I had them in front of little lime hydrangeas in our front yard garden bed and they did so well and they weren't touched by rabbits that I think this year I want to add more alliums. I think maybe I might add serendipity or I might add lavender bubbles. Now lavender bubbles is a darker purple than millennium and it blooms later than millennium. Whereas serendipity is a sport, meaning it's a genetic mutation of millennium. It's got the same color flowers and bloom time, but the foliage is blue instead of green, which sounds really nice because I love blue green colors of leaves and evergreen needles. So alliums are hardy in zones four through eight. They take full sun to part sun, bloom midsummer to late summer. In some cases, they might go into early fall depending on your zone. And just one caveat, and it's a slight one, but I'm here to help, so I want to tell you everything I know about these plants. There is a fellow gardener who told me that rabbits demolished her millennium alliums all the way down to the ground. That's the only instance I've heard so far. So just letting you know, it has happened. And come to think of it, it may happen with just about every plant. You never know. We all have horror stories. That I'm sure of. The second flowering perennial is geum also known as Avens. Now, as with a lot of the perennials on this list, GM comes in many varieties, many colors, some short, some tall. In fact, I have a great article on my website, which I'll link to in the description area below, so make sure you go down there, and you can learn all about GMs, how to care for them, and you can see some of the many varieties that are out there. There's so many that are so pretty. Currently, I have totally tangerine GM in my garden, which is a long-blooming sterile variety. And last August, I planted GM Tempo Rose, which will eventually have beautiful rose pink colored flowers. It's a shorter variety. And one more variety I have my eye on that I think I might get this year is called Pretty Coats Peach. It's so pretty. I guess that's why they called it Pretty Coats Peach. So GM is hardy in zones four through eight. It takes full sun to part sun. It's evergreen in warmer zones, including mine in zone seven, southern New Jersey. In early summer is when it primarily blooms, then sporadically if deadheaded. In fact, totally tangerine geum will bloom much longer than other geum varieties since it's sterile. The third flowering perennial is candy tuft. Now candy tuft is a great little perennial. It almost fills in like a ground cover. 
and it blooms primarily in spring when the plants are covered in tiny white flowers. It's so pretty. When it's not in bloom, candy tuff remains beautifully evergreen year round. Some varieties will have a rebloom in the fall, so you want to check your descriptions in your favorite plant catalogs or online in case you do want a rebloomer. And again, I do have an article on my website all about candy tuft, so I'll link it down below. You can see it in the description area and learn more about the plant. Candy tuft is hardy in zones three through nine. It takes full sun, it's evergreen, and it blooms early spring to late spring with a possible rebloom depending on the variety. The fourth blooming perennial are hellebores. And oh, how I love this plant. There are so many varieties. I have some blooming right now in mid-January in my garden. I'm so excited. I love this plant. Now hellebores bloom in early spring in colder zones, and they can bloom earlier during winter in warmer zones. So we had some weird warm weather last month, which I think triggered mine into blooming. There are hundreds of varieties out there, and there's more being developed all the time, so it would be impossible to even, I think, discover all the ones that exist out there. You can find them in many colors, single or ruffled flowers. They can be upward-facing flowers or nodding downward flowers. I kind of prefer the upward-facing because, you know, I don't want to get down on my knees to always look at them. So your best bet is probably to use the internet look at some of your favorite plant catalogs and really see what's out there and what you can grow. And you can grow a lot of hellebores from seed as well. So that's good to know. Currently, I still have my eye on several varieties, although I don't know where I'd put them. I am really in love with pink frost, which I don't have, uh, mahogany snow, cinnamon snow, ivory prints, and then I discovered one in the Plant Delights nursery catalog called Joker. And that looks gorgeous. So I can't wait to maybe add those at some point when I find a place to put them. Now I have a fun video that I will also link to below in the description area all about pruning and caring for hellebores. They're actually a really fun plant. This is a newer plant to me. I only started them about a year ago in my garden so I'm now totally addicted and I can see why people become addicted to them. It's really fun because it's an evergreen plant and then the leaves start getting kind of tattered in midwinter. You cut those leaves off and then it's like the flowers suddenly have space and room to show off their gorgeous blooms. They're absolutely magnificent and they last a really long time. So hellebores are hardy zones five through nine. They need mostly sunny to full shade, depending on the variety. You really need to read the labels. They bloom early spring to late spring and sometimes they'll bloom in the winter like this year, for example. And it also depends where you are in the world. I know in parts of the United Kingdom, parts of Europe, hellebores will bloom a little bit earlier than they do here in the United States. And also most varieties are evergreen, which makes it really nice for the rest of the year in your garden. So the fifth flowering perennial is blanket flower, also called gallardia. But I think blanket flower is a heck of a lot easier to say. So the variety I have in my garden so far is grape sensation. It's a unique color for blanket flowers as you see here. This specific variety is hardy in zones six to nine, but many varieties are hardy in a wider variety of zones, sometimes down to zones three, and some varieties can be grown as annuals too. The Arizona series, as it's called, consists of three varieties that are in pretty multicolors like orange and red and apricot and yellow, and they're from Walter's Gardens. They're hardy in zones three through 10. But right now, I have my eye on a variety from Plant Delights Nursery called Glitz and Glamour. It's such a pretty yellow color. It's only hardy though in zones seven through nine. Now I purposely planted my grape sensation in between my Black Eyed Susans to somewhat protect the Black Eyed Susans from the rabbits. It did seem to work last season as my Black Eyed Susans weren't touched. So I have shown you previously how the rabbits demolished the Black Eyed Susans in years past, but I'm hoping this year and going forward, it'll be a little bit different as I mix in some more perennials that rabbits don't like. Now blanket flowers are hardy in zones three through nine, but you do want to check the specific plant information for your variety. They take full sun to part sun. Again, you want to check the label and they bloom summer to early fall in most cases, depending again on the variety. Okay, number six on my list is lavender. There are so many hybrids and varieties out there. There are dark purples, medium purples, bluish purple, lilac colored, there's pink, there's white, there's short, there's tall. Again, you can find something that is gonna fit into your garden. Now, I prefer Lavender Phenomenal, and that's what I chose specifically because it's evergreen, or evergrey, as you can call it. It also stands up really great to heat and humidity. It won't falter or wilt under the pressure of any kind of super humid weather. 
and it's great in the winter time it you, it can be piled with snow and it's still going to look great and nice and fresh come springtime so it's a great evergreen variety beautiful long blooming and the breeder that did lavender phenomenal also has a new variety called sensational and that variety has all the great attributes of phenomenal lavender only it's more compact and larger flowers so that sounds like another nice one to try again i'll link to a couple of videos i have on lavender in the description area below and including one where you can see a rabbit in the video just nonchalantly walking away from me he's not afraid of me at all but at least he was i guess afraid of the lavender because he's never touched it which is great so most lavender varieties are hardy in zones five through nine. They all take full sun and they have low water needs. So make sure wherever you have it planted that the soil drains well. So lavender doesn't like to sit in water at all. So the seventh flowering perennial on my list is catmint or nepeta. I know if you've watched prior videos of mine, you saw that not too long ago I posted a video where I basically talked about a horrible breakup I had between me and Catmint. Specifically, it was Cat's Pajamas Catmint. I loved it, it didn't love me back. So, had to say goodbye, out they went. However, that doesn't mean I don't like Catmint and won't recommend it. Au contraire, <laughs> I actually love Catmint. And I'm hoping that I can find maybe another variety. Maybe I'll try Walker's Low, that's been recommended to me. And we'll see because you can find tall or short varieties. You can find colors from darker purple to pink and white, lavender blue. So there is something for everyone, including me. Now, you're gonna have a ton of watching videos to do because I also am including that video below in the description area so you can just see exactly what my frustration was with Cat's Pajamas. Everyone's experience varies. I'm just sharing my own. I actually think it's a beautiful plant. So cat mints are hardy in zones three through eight. They need full sun. They bloom early summer to midsummer or longer, depending on the variety, and they really don't need that much water at all. So there is one caveat I have to share about catmint, and it has nothing to do with me and my own frustrations with the plant. A fellow gardener in Arizona told me that her catmint plants were eaten down to the nubs by rabbits. So that happened to her. Again, that's the only instance I've heard of, but we have to remember rabbits can't read. So they're not supposed to like catmint. Apparently this one liked it too much. So if you're unsure of what's gonna happen in your own garden, the smartest thing is buy one plant, try it out, see how it does. If it's not getting demolished or anything, then you can go buy some more. This way you're not, you know, killing yourself with spending a lot of money only to have the heartbreak of seeing rabbits eat everything. Been there, done that. You can also use chicken wire cloches or something to protect those plants but that's another video also below in the description area <laughs> so number eight on my list is geraniums specifically perennial geraniums not annual ones keep in mind that annual geraniums and they're sold everywhere as geraniums they're actually called perligoniums it's the perennial version that are the true geraniums you don't need to remember that I'm just sharing with you a little tidbit, a little factoid, nothing major. So my favorite perennial geranium is Roseanne, and there's four reasons I just love her. First, the flowers are an amazing blue with some purple color. The second reason is the flowers are sterile, making this the longest blooming variety of any of the perennial geraniums so far. The third reason is they weave their way through the garden and into nearby shrubs in a really pleasing way, as you can see here on little lime hydrangeas in last year's garden. And most importantly, rabbits leave them alone. That is the main thing that is so good about these. Now, there are many other varieties of these perennial geraniums that are just as beautiful, if not necessarily having as long a bloom time. You can find colors in fuchsia, purple, white, pale purple, blue. In fact, there's a newer variety called Midnight Ghost, which looks really nice. It supposedly has white flowers with pink veins on dark burgundy stems, and that sounds really nice. So perennial geraniums are hardy in zones five through eight. They take full sun to part shade and all are summer flowering, sometimes into the fall, depending on the variety you have. For example, Roseanne, you might get blooms with Roseanne into November. Okay, number nine on the list is Russian sage. Now, Russian sage years ago kind of got a bad rap because before they had all kinds of new varieties and hybrids that they have out now, Russian sage basically was a tall plant. In fact, the version that I got last year 
It's called Superba. I think I planted it two years ago. And I planted it in a corner and I thought that would do really well. But although I was happy with the height, it spread too much. So I'm actually going to dig that up this coming spring and I'm going to put it in a better location for it. And I'm going to get a small version. Most likely I'm going to get Blue Jean Baby, which looks like a nice, cute, compact variety of Russian Sage. There's many sizes and varieties to choose from. So you'll definitely be able to find something pretty for your own garden. So Russian Sage is hardy in zones four through nine. It needs full sun. It flowers all summer into fall, and it has very low water needs. So you can definitely use this as a low maintenance plant, and it's very, very pretty. So now we've come to number 10, and that is Veronica, also known as Speedwell. Now, there are upright versions that have spiky flowers. There's also some low ground covers. I wish I could plant all of them. They're so beautiful. They come in so many different colors, and rabbits don't like them, which is really great. Now the upright spikes on Veronica are really nice because they provide some vertical interest in the garden. And it's just kind of a different look from any of the daisy type flowers or petal flowers that you might have in your garden. Bluestone Perennials has a great selection to give you some ideas of what all's out there. You could also just do a search on the internet for Veronica and you'll be amazed at all the varieties you can choose from. And by the way, I didn't want to forget to tell you that I have a video that I did last year on my favorite plant catalogs, seed catalogs, and websites where you can research and look up plants to your heart's content. It's really fun to be an armchair gardener this time of year because that's when we're all starting to plan and dream and think about what we might want to order. And I know, if you're like me, you start with all the plants and then you have to narrow it down a little bit. But I'll link to that video below and at the end of this video so that you make sure you check that out as well. And by the way, Veronica is hardy in zones four through eight, and it can take full sun to part shade. All right, so those are 10 that I have in my garden. Now I wanna share with you some that I'm planning on buying this year. And the first is called Agastache. Some people pronounce it Agastache. So I don't know, I've heard both ways. This is a fabulous plant. It's a pollinator magnet, as are many of these flowering perennials, by the way. But it's also a hummingbird magnet, and that's kind of how it got its other name, which is hummingbird mint. So I'm planning on adding rosy posy, which was recommended to me by a fellow gardener from Maryland. Rosy posy is a long blooming sterile variety, and it has beautiful lavender pink flowers. But I also have my eye on something called mango tango, and it's got pretty mango peach colored flowers. Now, agastache are great for gardens on the drier side, or if you have a drier area in your garden. So again, make sure your soil drains well, as this plant does not like to stay wet. Now, agastache is hardy in zones five through nine. It needs full sun to flower at its best, and it flowers predominantly midsummer into early fall. Okay, so the next perennial is called yarrow, also called achillea, so you'll see both names. Now, Again, this is one of those plants that has so many different colors, so many different varieties, that it's been kind of hard for me to narrow down and choose what I want to buy. But I think I'm going to end up getting Firefly Sunshine from Proven Winners. And also, I'm looking at Sassy Summer Taffy. It's just so pretty. And that one's from Walter's Gardens. But I also love the traditional yellow color. And the white varieties are so pretty as well. So I'm going to try to narrow it down, but who knows? I may end up with four different varieties. So yarrow is hardy in zones three through eight. It needs full sun to do its best flowering. And it's great for gardens on the drier side or if you have a drier area in your garden. And it also flowers all summer, especially if you cut flowers to maybe enjoy indoors in a vase, you will definitely keep the flowers coming. So the next flowering perennial is columbine. And I think bluestone perennials has the best selection of colors and varieties. And it's a great place to dive in and start your research on what you might want because columbine comes in all sorts of colors, red, blue, purple, yellow, orange, white. The list is almost endless. And you can grow them from seed too, so check out the seed catalogs if you wanna do it that way. Right now, I've got my eye on two varieties. One is Dorothy Rose, and the other is Clementine Red. Now, Columbine is hardy in zones three through nine. It can be in full sun to mostly shady, and it depends on the variety, so make sure you check the info and the labels. And it blooms mid-spring to early summer. So the next two plants are fuzzy textured plants. And the first one is Artemisia. And that's primarily grown for its silver gray foliage and leaf texture. And there's two really great ones out there. There's, well, there's many great ones, but the two that I think I'm interested in, one is Silver Mound, and that's a proven winner's variety and also from Walter's Gardens. And then there's another variety called Silver Bullet, which is a proven winner's variety. Artemisia is hardy in zones five through nine, and it needs full sun. 
The next plant is lamb's ear, also a fuzzy texture plant. I used to grow it years ago and I absolutely loved it, so I definitely want to add it again. It definitely works best in a drier bed than in any kind of bed that stays wet. The best known variety is called Helen von Stein. It's also known as big ears. It's got soft velvety leaves. It's soft green in color, almost silvery when the sun hits the leaves. And the leaves are just amazing to touch. Kids actually really love them. So this particular variety, the Helen von Stein, it rarely flowers, which some gardeners actually prefer, but I actually think the flowers are really unique and pretty. So I may try and seek out a different lamb's ear variety so I can actually get some flowers from them. Lamb's ear in general is hardy in zones four through eight, and it needs full to partly sun conditions. And finally, here's four more plants that I'm not gonna go in depth about, but I definitely think they should be on your radar because rabbits don't like them and they're each really pretty plants. The first is a stilby, which if you watch my prior videos, I recently removed mine last fall, but they're great plants for the right spot. Ladies mantle is a beautiful plant with chartreuse yellow flowers. Bee balm, the choices are almost endless in colors, heights, you name it. But bee balm is also a really good plant and that's a really good one if you have more moist garden spots. And sedum, sedum also known as stone crop again this category of perennials is huge from ground covers to upright flowering sedums and again a little caveat i did have a gardener tell me that her sedums she had several different varieties and all were chomped down by rabbits again i share it because somebody mentioned it so you may want to start with one or two again see how they do and then if you seem to be okay with it rabbits aren't touching them go ahead and add more because they are beautiful, beautiful plants. And you could go nuts just planting a garden with sedum. They're stunning. So now it's your turn. Let me know in the comments what perennials you have in your garden that the rabbits don't touch. And if you have one or two horror stories, that's okay too. It's how we learn, right? And for additional rabbit prevention ideas, check out my rabbit prevention playlist. And remember, check out my related videos and articles in the description area below. Until next time, happy gardening.